You ever hear a cavitation? Do you know what it is? Really? Well, that's coming right up. Well, we're at the 2016 NACAT convention in Pasadena, Texas. We're in the Fluid Power booth, and with me is Rory McLaren. He's the president of Fluid Power, and he knows lots about cavitation. Help us understand what causes cavitation, what we can do about it, and, you know, the effects that it has on our hydraulic systems. Jim, it, it, there is much uh, confusion about what cavitation actually is, and so what this particular uh, simulator will demonstrate is exactly what it is. In other words, there's confusion about, if, if, if I ask students, for example, about cavitation, 50% of them will say it's because of the dissolved air in the oil due to high inlet restriction on a pump, for example, or they'll say it's got air in it, which is air coming in from the outside. So which is it? Because it can only be one of those. So what this does is it demonstrates both of those situations so that there is no confusion about what cavitation actually is. So by definition, cavitation is the formation and collapse of gaseous cavities within a liquid. So looking at the hydraulic oil in this hydraulic tank right here, you can see you, there is no evidence of air being in the oil right now. But hydraulic oil is made up of 10% dissolved air by volume. So you can't see it, but if you subject it to a vacuum, in other words, imagine opening up a pop, uh, a translucent pop bottle. Okay, it's translucent, there's no evidence of any gas in it. You take the top off, which means you release the pressure, and all of a sudden you see bubbles coming out of the liquid. If we, if we subject hydraulic oil to a vacuum, it'll do exactly the same thing, which is really not harmful, except for one problem. When the, uh, when the dissolved air comes out of the oil on the inlet side of the pump, which means it's operating in a vacuum, and that's why it's coming out, if the uh, hydraulic pump is running against high resistance, high pressure, then that little uh, gaseous cavity implodes, and that, the force of that implosion is not measured in pounds of force per square inch, of course, relative to the pressure, it's measured in tons of force per square inch. And I'd like to show you, so let's start it up and I'll show you what that looks like. Great, okay, let's see it. All right, so what we are able to do here is we've got a couple of controls in the front here. This one allow, uh, will allow us to let air into the system. This one here will allow us to, uh, to uh, restrict the inlet, which is the same as having, for example, a plugged screen inside a hydraulic reservoir. Uh, this will give us a resistance so we can create some pressure. We have a transparent reservoir, we have a transparent intake, so the larger of the two transmission lines is the inlet and the smaller is the outlet. So the oil is going to be coming this way and going that way. We have a flow meter so we can see how uh, cavitation affects flow. We have a vacuum gauge so we can see whether we're going up, increasing inlet restriction or coming down, decreasing inlet restriction, which will, will, is what will occur if we let air go into the system. And of course we have a pressure gauge over here. So I'm going to start it up and upon starting it we'll see a normal situation. So here we go. All right. As you can see, right now we are running about 1.8 gallons per minute. There is absolutely no evidence that the oil is actually flowing in these two transmission lines at all. This is how a hydraulic system should look as it's running. Now what we'll do is we'll create cavitation. To do that, what I, what I will do is I'll create restriction on the inlet, meaning, it's, of course, I, in simple terms, I'm going to make it harder for the oil to get into the pump. And then what we'll see here is we'll see the dissolved air coming out of the oil, and then you'll start to hear the noise that cavitation generates inside the hydraulic pump. So here we go. We'll look at this transmission line here, and you'll see as, I, as, the, as, the, as the inlet restriction goes up, you'll start to see the dissolved air coming out of the oil. There it comes. Now, that's cavitation. The formation and out on the uh, pressure side of the pump collapse of that gaseous cavity within the oil. And that, and, and there's no evidence of it. Once cavitation has occurred in the pump, it just goes away. There's no evidence of it. So there's no turbulence in the reservoir. The only thing that this does is it starts to eat away because of the implosion it'll start to chip away metal parts inside the pump. And that's bad because now what you're doing is you're in the farming business because every piece of contamination we feed into a hydraulic system is an abrasive seed and its growth is exponential. So it's a very, very harmful to a hydraulic system. 
Now let's go to, and let's clear up the issue associated with air. Air, because a lot of people say, well, it's getting air in it. Now, cavitation associated with air is not called cavitation, it's called pseudo-cavitation. And the word pseudo in the dictionary is false cavitation. And it's called that because it has nothing to do with either the liquid's vapor pressure or the dissolved air in the liquid. So let's look at that now. So what I'm going to do different here is I'm going to open this valve and I'm going to let air go in. I'm going to create a condition called air contamination of the oil. And this is very harmful because what you'll notice is as the air starts to go in, you'll see it in the pressure side of the pump, but you'll also see it in the reservoir so it'll start aerating the oil. And that's what you don't want in a hydraulic system because a hydraulic oil has four purposes. We transmit power with it, we lubricate with it, we cool with it, and we seal clearances with it. Now imagine if it's just completely aerated. You lose all of the above, which means it's a systemic catastrophic condition in any hydraulic system. So let's do that. Let's open this valve here, and we'll see the air come in. And, and, and this, by the way, in a hydraulic system would be like a hairline crack in a transmission line. So let me just create this condition. Okay, here comes the air now. Here comes the air. Now watch what happens as it starts to pump air into the system. My inlet restriction has gone down, which is obviously indicative of uh, it's easier now for the pump to take air than it is to take oil. Now watch what happens here. Evidence of air, but look what happens in the oil reservoir. You can see the air being pumped into the oil and it almost looks like the oil is boiling. And now what it's going to do, it's going to create a cloud. Of course, the air rising, it's going to create a cloud here. And it's going to now, in fact, it'll even cause the oil level to, to rise because you're pumping air and oil into the system. So now you've got a situation that's even worse than cavitation. Pseudo-cavitation is a systemic problem because the, the, air, the oil throughout the system looks like this. So as you can see, this is, this is going to get worse and worse and worse, and, and it's representative of the oil throughout the hydraulic system. So this is a terrible situation. So what we've actually just looked at is cavitation is high inlet restriction on a hydraulic pump. It's the formation and collapse of gaseous cavities in, in the liquid. However, if I'm letting air go into the inlet side of a hydraulic pump, that's not associated, like we said, not associated with the liquid's vapor pressure or the dissolved air in the oil. So now you can see what we've got. In fact, some people get confused because they say that this is water contamination because it's changing the complexion of the oil. But that's not what it is. It's air and it's, it's, in, 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 it's just a terrible problem in a, in a hydraulic system. All right, Jim, in addition to showing cavitation and pseudo-cavitation, one of the other reasons why a, a hydraulic system will aerate is because of either um, uh, designing a hydraulic system where a return line is dropping oil in above the oil level. So it's not, the oil is not terminating, the oil return lines are not terminating below the oil level. So what happens is, if we terminate oil above, uh, uh, if we drop oil in above the oil, it will create, it will generate turbulence, which again will cause the same pseudo cavitation because it'll aerate the oil. This is also caused by neglecting oil levels because sometimes if you look at machines, you'll see the oil level is really low, but that's not low enough to cause any alarm according to some of the uh, maintenance people I don't really understand. In other words, if my return lines are, let's say close, let's say 10 inches or eight inches uh, below the oil level, and I, let's say I let the oil level go down 12 inches, I'm going to create this problem. So what we are going to demonstrate now is we're going to start it up and then we're going to open a valve that will let the oil level go down. And this return line, the white line, is going to eventually be above the oil level and you'll see in the oil the turbulence occur. So once again, we'll see the same condition. All right, so let's start it up. And I'll open up the valve that's going to let the oil drain out of the reservoir. Now, as the oil level goes down, and in, a, in just a few moments, you'll see the, uh, the uh, oil return flow coming in above the oil level, and again, you'll see the turbulence generated right here inside the oil. It's amazing. And what it'll do, it'll do the same thing as letting the air go into the inlet side of the hydraulic pump. It's got the same outcome. It's a systemic problem in a hydraulic system, 
and that's why it is absolutely critical to maintain oil level at the correct um, uh, recommend as recommended by the manufacturer so it's going to begin here in just a moment on the other side you'll notice it will also develop a vortex a vortex is what occurs when the oil a, a large body of oil goes through a narrow opening and it starts to create the vortex which is also going to aerate the oil so here we go the now, we're now discharging above the oil level and you can see the aeration caused by this condition and again it's going to do the same thing we saw a moment ago with letting the air go in. So here we go. We've got this problem occurring here. You can see it's starting to aerate the oil, but we're also on this side creating the vortex. So because the oil level now is encroaching on the intake to the pump. So you don't have to expose the intake to have air go in. All you have to do is encroach on it. So once again, these are really, really bad conditions for any hydraulic system. So maintain oil levels to what the manufacturers recommend and we will prevent these problems from happening. Uh, th this is just fantastic information, Rory. I, I have no idea, maybe you guys have no idea either, of what uh, th 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 this type of situation uh, can do. Well, you know what it can do, but what causes it? Uh, this is fantastic, and I really want to thank you, Rory. Uh, by the way, uh, Fluid Power Training Institute um, has this uh, t type of stuff. You invented it, you, you build this stuff, and I suppose you market it as well uh, to, to schools and institutions. So, uh, point being is that if you want to learn more about cavitation, pseudo-cavitation, and that sort of thing, you really need to find a facility that has this type of stuff from fluid power, and uh, you're going to learn so much, you'll be so glad you did.